Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. I wanted to switch gears for this one and really focus on the new players trying to get into lore. If you are a new player and don't know where to begin, feeling overwhelmed by all the menus, or you want some quick tips to get a jump start on other new players, then this video is for you. Hello, my name is Tempo. I've hit master tier every season since the beta, even peaking rank 1 on the North American ladder, and I will be your guide to this wonderful card game called Legends of Runeterra. So I made a new account and tried out some of the new player experience again for the first time in over a year, and I realized that there's a lot of changes to the resources given to new players, and even some play restrictions. So let's start from the ground up. The tutorial. Honestly, all things considered, the tutorial for Legends of Runeterra is very good. It takes you step by step through like four or five um, scenarios in order to teach you the different mechanics, and it really tries to teach you one thing at a time as to not overwhelm the new players. The biggest problem I actually have with the tutorial is that some of the cards don't exist, and actually most of the cards that you see don't do what they actually do in the game. So I don't know why they decided to go this route, maybe they thought the new players would just kind of forget uh, what the cards did in the tutorial and just learn from the ground up afterwards, but it's a little um, deceiving uh, in my opinion. Also, I'd like to take a moment while the tutorial is playing to explain the three biggest mechanics in the game to help you understand the flow of a match. Legends of Runeterra is very unique in the way that during each turn, both players are able to act, play units, and cast spells. Once one player does an action, the other player is able to take an action as well, and it goes back and forth until both players decide to pass. This is really cool because it never feels like you're just watching your opponent play the game. Uh, you always have a chance to do something as well, which makes it a lot more enjoyable and less boring in my personal opinion. Because I came from um, Hearthstone, and I used to play that game for years and years and years, but some turns I, I'm just sitting there watching my opponent play, the rope is going across, burning down, and they're just sitting there playing card after card. Oh, now they're going to do an attack, now they're going to play a card. And, you know, I could get up, go to the bathroom, take a shower, have a nap, get dressed, and like get back, and the opponents are still playing. But in Legends or in Terra, every time your opponent has an action, you also get to play an action as well, so it makes it a lot more interactive, and honestly a lot more fluid. The second mechanic that I want to talk about is attack order. Only one player is able to attack during each turn while the other one is on defense. What's cool about lore is that much like in Magic the Gathering, the defender is able to determine block targets during combat, which makes the game innately defense favored. What really shakes things up though is the spells in the game, which is the third and final mechanic that I want to briefly cover. Spells have four speeds, slow, fast, focus, and burst. Slow spells are considered slow because they can't be used in combat. Fast spells can be used in combat, however enemies can react to them and play their own spells to negate or stop said fast spells. Focus speed spells can't be reacted to, but also can't be used in combat. While burst speed is the best of the bunch, being able to be used during combat and the opponents have no reactability to the burst spells, they just work. Also, the coolest side mechanic in the game, in my opinion, is the ability to bank spell mana. This is also called floating mana. All you have to do is end a turn with mana remaining, and it will be banked for a future turn. This allows you to do cool things, like play an 8 cost spell on turn 5, because you spend your 5 mana for the turn, plus 3 banked spell mana, so you can get some really interesting combos off and you can play high cost spells in favor of not playing units for certain turns, which adds a little bit more of strategic diversity and flexibility with deck building. After the tutorial, you are instructed to play a challenge, which is basically another mini tutorial, and there are an absolute crap ton of these to go through, so I think you can pick one or it just makes you play the first one, and they are uh, scenarios to play through, basically just more tutorials. Really really good at learning the game, and then uh, once you beat through all of those, you get a bunch of XP over the course of it, and the challenges will be done. Whenever a new expansion comes out, more challenges are added to showcase the new mechanics of the game in order to get players to understand uh, what is being added. So. After that, you are shown this menu. Now I'd like to go through everything and really just 
give new players an idea of how to navigate the menus and how to mid-max resources. So first, at the top left, the most important, we have our player icon. We can go click on it and then there are plenty of cool icons to choose from. I kind of like the Poros, I kind of like the Shadow Isle stuff, so you can change this once you figure out what decks you like to play, and maybe you like a certain card, so it's like, oh, I want, you know, Green Glade Duo to be my card because I really like Ionia, I really like Elusives, right? So we can do something like that. Um, other than that, we see resources at the top. Uh, this first resource is paid for currency, so it's basically like RP in League of Legends where you can buy this and then spend this on cosmetics. These shards are how you craft cards. And these red ruby looking things are how you craft uh, prismatic cards, which are just basically shiny cards. Or for other card game players, you might know this as hollow cards, right? Being able to holograph your stuff and play with your secret rare, um, super fancy Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So at the top, we have news. This is usually not too good. This also opens every single time you open the game. You can just scroll through it. Sometimes there's patch notes on here you can like glance through. Uh, these are missions. This is something you want to check on often because this is where you're going to be getting a lot of your XP. So play cards in AI matches or challenges. We're going to want to do that and get the XP from it in order to craft cards. This is the friend menu and then this is your settings. All right, so nothing too crazy up here. So now we're going to talk about the, the HUD itself. We have loot. Loot is usually like icons and other things that you get for just playing the game. It'll pop up every once in a while. You can just claim your stuff. That's a really cool icon. So I'm gonna go back up here and change that. I really like that sword. Uh, Viego is a really cool champion. So yeah, we're gonna rock that. Next we have login rewards. So this is super important to get. You get one each and every day up until one week into the game. Side note is after your seven day login bonus, you will no longer be able to get login rewards of any kind. So don't expect like, oh, a month worth of login bonuses. No, it's just your first week of playing. And as your seven day bonus, you get an Ash deck, which is very, very good for new players. So I highly recommend, even if you're not playing every single day for your first week, just log in, quickly collect the login reward and move on to whatever else you're doing that day. So I will go ahead and collect some cards. Oh, cool, we got some uh, a rare card here and a rare card here and commons. I will talk about card rarity probably later or in a future video. So after login rewards, we also have weekly vault. This is super important and Lux is going to tell us every game improves your vault. The better your vault, the better your weekly rewards. So every Thursday in this game, this is like the coolest thing ever, by the way, in order to get the most resources possible, you want to play for your Thursday vault. Every single Thursday, you will get three chests, depending on how much you play that week and how many missions you do. So right now, I'm at three bronze chests. However, if I do missions and I play, each of these chests will level up. So it'll be one silver, two bronze. And then after that will be two silver, one bronze. And then I'll have three silver chests. And it keeps going like that and upgrades all the way up to triple diamonds. So you want to play as much as you possibly can, min max all of your uh, missions each day and get big vaults in order to get big boosts to your collection every Thursday. So when the left menu we got home which just brings us back to this screen. Play menu. Play menu at first is going to look very restrictive because of the new player experience update that we got in the past couple months which is uh, one of the first times I'm seeing it as well. It forces you to play challenges and versus bots early on before you can even play PvP. Oh, what's cool is you can also see a leaderboard of the uh, ranked ladder. This is important for being able to import people's decks. So whoever's playing the best deck right now, you can be like, oh, well, I'm just going to import their deck and it goes straight to your collection, which we're going to talk about next. Collection. This is where you can view your decks, cards, and cosmetics. Thank you, Lux, doing my job for me. So this is the imported deck that we got from the rank one player, and we also have the three decks that the game starts you out with. So very cool. You can go into the deck menu. You can share the code with other players, your friends. You can edit the deck, or you can delete it outright. Editing the deck lets you go into a separate menu that shows you all the cards and whatnot, which is usually this. This lets you... Man, she is really doing my job for me. You can browse your cards here. You can also show unowned to see which cards are missing from your collection. Oh, well, thanks a lot. I guess I'm going to do that. So you can hit show unowned. You can see all the champions in the game from all the regions. You can filter a region if you like one specifically. I am partial to Shadow Isles. That is my favorite region. I also like Noxus. 
So I like to glance through here and be like, oh yeah, these are some of my favorite champions from League. You know, Vagar is really fun to play in the mid lane. I might want to make a deck for him. Hecarim's really cool. I might want to make a deck for him, right? And you can do that for each of the regions as a new player. I know a lot of people like Ezreal. He's a fan favorite. He's pretty good to play around. We got Teemo to be really annoying. So as such, you can go through the regions, figure out what champions you want to play and start working towards decks. Skins are cosmetics, they just make your card look better. Um, some, some of the cards have different animations when they level up, and some of them are just like, pretty nice, pretty good. Boards are the things that you play on, these are also paid for cosmetics. I mean, it's just, you know, your background that you're playing on. You want to go pool party, you can buy the pool party one. Guardians are little dudes that um, sit on the side of your board, also a nice cosmetic option. Card backs, more cosmetics. As you can tell, there are a lot of cosmetics in Legends of Runeterra because it is a free-to-play game, and a very, very good free-to-play game at that. You can play this game completely free and have a full collection just by playing for like, you know, six, seven months. I have a, I've had a full collection since the game started, but that's because I play uh, quite too much. Emotes are also a really fun cosmetic option. So that is everything that is in your collection menu. You are able to see what you own and what is purchasable, which is really nice to all have in one place. Rewards. Now this is one of the more important things that we need to talk about and discuss. So at first you're going to start in this prologue route, which is a linear route where as you play and get uh, XP, you will go across this route and get these rewards. So my next reward is a new deck that features Braum and also has Targon in it. After that is a cosmetic Poro. Uh, after that is a wild capsule which contains cards and shards, uh, another deck another chest that contains shards and cards, prismatic rewards which is your holograph card, uh, another deck, versus player. So once we get this far we're able to play PvP. Very cool. Uh, and then region roads. So region roads I'm going to have to talk about next. So this is what region rewards looks like. You can see a list of all the regions within the game and they each have a path in order for you to go across and get cards for said region. For example, Bandle City just came out so let's look at that. We can activate this region, which means, boom, now as we get XP and play the game, we will unlock cards and champions and sh like get shards and stuff like that, all of which are going to be in theme with the region itself. So notable champions are the new Yordles, Tristana, Poppy, Vagar, and Ziggs. So as we go down here and we see what we are able to get, in these chests are going to be Bandle City themed stuff, and in this champion capsule is a high likelihood of getting one of those champions. It will be at random, however it will be probably one of those. So that's really cool, you can choose what region you want to play in in order to build uh, certain decks. My general tip is to look at the ones that have the green aura on them. These have boosted XP, so what this means is, let me click on one. During this initial route you can see on the bottom how all of this is green, right? You have a green line all the way up until this reward right here. This means that you will earn all of these rewards on the green route faster than normal. 50% boosted XP, that's what this means up here. XP you gain toward completing this level is multiplied. There are boosted XP levels on each road and they never expire so you can complete them at your own pace. So this is a general tip that I like to give is for example, if you really want to only run Noxus, right, let's say you really love Noxus stuff, you really like the spider deck that the game gives you, you can all in on Noxus, you can go up to like level 20, level 25, and you know, you want to play in the regions of the cards that you want to get. That makes a lot of sense, right? You want to play a Noxus Shadow Isles deck, so I'm going to play Noxus and Shadow Isles route, and that's really good at getting the specific cards you want. However, if you want a general good amount of cards from each of the regions and are able to build flexible decks early, I I highly recommend playing the boosted route of each of the regions that have it. So in Noxus, you will activate Noxus, and then you will go and you will play all of your cards, all your decks, it doesn't matter what you play, you will still earn XP for this. Like for example, if you're playing a Freljord deck, you will still earn XP for the Noxus region. What you play actually does not affect your region rewards at all, so don't be alarmed by that. So, as I was saying, you want to play across your boosted XP all the way until you get to the Wild Capsule and then change regions. Now we're going to go into Freljord. Then we're going to play the boosted route of Freljord. And when we're done with that, we're going to go to Piltover and Zaun. Then we're going to play the boosted route of Piltover and Zaun, you see? And if you do this, you will earn the most versatile amount of cards in the fastest amount of time. This will make you the most flexible in terms of deck building. 
So on this account, I have my weekly vault uh, open, so I wanted to show what that looks like. I only have the three bronze chests because I don't play on this account too often, but this is pretty much what happens. We get a couple cards from regions and we get some shards here. And then boom, that's it. But of course, the more chests that you get, the better the rewards you get. So you want to upgrade as much as possible. Three bronze, not so good as you saw. However, you get diamonds, you have just loads and loads of resources coming in. So after rewards, we have events, this event tab. This is basically a battle pass. So you can think of it like that. You can buy the battle pass and you go across this line in the same manner that you go across the region rewards, very linear fashion, and you are able to get uh, bonus rewards. There are some that are marked as free, which means you don't have to buy the battle pass to get. The ones marked as premium, usually cosmetics, you do have to get. Um, so yeah, there's also that. And then there's the store where you are able to buy all of your stuff. You can see structure decks, which are really cool. These are pretty good foundations for getting into the game. Uh, you only need to do minor number changes after that, but it's really good at learning the game and learning the deck. Highly recommend trying that if you want to spend uh, in real life money. Uh, you don't usually have to, you can build decks for free, but this option is available, especially if you like the champions. Uh, oh, look at this, this is free. We definitely want this. So I guess it's important to check the shop and pick up some free cosmetics every once in a while. Look at that. World Championship 2021 Bundle. Cute card deck, cute icon. Um, other than that, I already talked about the skins, cards, boards, guardians, and stuff like that earlier. So... The next important thing that I want to talk about is how to craft cards and what resources are in order to actually craft said cards. So the cards come in multiple rarities, common, rare, epic, and champion. As a new player, you have the most access to common and rare resources, so it's important to find decks that utilize these two rarities rather than the other ones. Champions, of course, you're also going to want to use, and they are the highest priority since champions are the most powerful cards in the game. Epics are sometimes powerful, they're not always the best cards, but they are really hard to get as a new player, so you want to craft decks that have a few amount of epics, but mostly commons and rares. So when you're looking through decks to craft, let's say we really want uh, Scythria, we only have two of her as indicated by these two circles, and then this one isn't filled in, so we are able to use three different resources in crafting. We can use IRL currency, which again I would not recommend because you're able to get these other currencies pretty fast. Next we have shards. Shards are a global currency that you can use to craft any kind of card. As such, it's kind of important to save these for champions or epics because their wild cards are pretty rare. And speaking of wild cards, that will be this icon right here. It's a colored card. We have eight of those, as you can see. So I can make eight uh, common cards, which is boom, 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 easy clap. I could just make the third Scythria right here and then also have seven cards for the others. The blue is the rare wild cards and the epic is the purple. So what I always recommend is for commons and rares, use up your wild cards first, and then use your shards if you really, really have to. Shards should be reserved for your champions and your epics, because like I mentioned just a moment ago, champion wild cards are actually pretty hard to come by, and you need 3,000 shards to make a single champion. So it's kind of important to save your shards, make champions with them, all right? That's my general advice for new players. Uh, it's really easy to just be like, oh, I have the shards, boop, 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 and then all of a sudden I can't make a champion and it takes me forever to get one, right? So we want to save that resource. Always save your shards, champions, and epics. Mainly champions, to be honest. And use your wild cards first on any of your um, cards that you want to craft. So, for example, we can also craft a rare right here. We can see that. We have two of those. Boom, I can get a playset of Imagine Possibilities if I want it. Not really the best card. Don't know why I'm showcasing this. But yes, that is basically how crafting works. Okay, so the last main thing that I want to talk about is the PvP options and also some general tips before I leave you guys off. So, Expedition Mode is basically um, Arena from other game modes or like Draft, where you can build a deck based on, um, I'll just show you, begin a trial. So you get a deck to choose from, or not really a deck, you get to choose a champion and a couple supporting cards, so you can kind of determine what you want to build. I really like Tristana, I really like Nocturne and Race, and I really like Pike. But this is really good for new players because you are able to test decks and champions that you don't actually have access to. You don't need to have Tristana to see her here in this package, so it's like, oh, I really want to see what a Tristana deck plays like, so I'm going to build a Tristana deck. And then you are able to build a second champion with her, see what synergizes, 
Uh, Vagar is pretty cool. He's very different though, so I'm gonna go Nami and try to play like a swarmy uh, zoo deck that just likes to fill the board as fast as possible and hit as quickly as possible. And then you are able to draft cards and you keep building your deck out of these little drafts. Uh, for example, this one, I definitely want this package because there's good units in here. Uh, this is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, we'll go with this, right? And then you can build your deck all the way up until uh, your 15th pick and then able to play that versus other people that also draft decks from randomly selected cards. It's a really, really good game mode, again, at learning cards, what they do, different deck strategies. Uh, you have to use a token or a resource to play the expeditions. The token you get each um, weekly vault. I'm pretty sure it depends on how high your chests go or if you always get one, I don't exactly remember. But you can also use shards and uh, IRL currency to draft expeditions. But every single time you use a token or a resource to get into expeditions, you get two runs. Two runs for the price of one and you get rewards for finishing your run and you get rewards based on your higher of the two runs that you play. So it's really, really fun. Really, really good. I personally like expeditions a lot and uh, I stream it and make content for it quite often because I think it's a really good game mode. So other than that, we also have the challenges, like I mentioned before, a bunch of tutorials. Gauntlet is like a tournament format. This lets you practice tournament style gameplay and you get to run three decks and basically play like a mini tourney. Um, tournament is if you are one of the top players, you are able to play in the tournaments. And then we want to talk about labs. Labs are PVE for the most part, and there's usually a PVP option as well. Ultra Rapid Draw. So this is a game mode where you can play against another person, and there's just like crazy bonus effects happening. You could draw a bunch of cards that are like really cheap, really quick games. Also really good at learning the game because you get to use like randomly generated cards in order to learn what they do, and it's, it's pretty fun. Uh, Saltwater Scourge is a single player map event where you build a deck and then you have cool powers and you go across a board and beat plenty of AI and uh, beat like a final boss and stuff, really cool. Lab of Legends is the same thing but it's a little bit more linear, there's no map that you're playing on, you're just beating AI. So don't let that turn you off because playing against AI is really, really good for new players and really good for missions. You can actually accomplish all of your missions, every single one, just by playing AI. And also you get XP. I know it says next PVP win, but you also get this bonus XP for playing against the bots as well. So if you just like want to get on and play a couple games, you don't really have a whole lot of time. I highly recommend playing a quick lab or play versus an AI just to get the missions done. My biggest tip for new players is prioritize your quests. Get all of these done as much as possible because this is where you're going to get all your cards from. You want to hit up your missions every day. Uh, you can reroll the ones that you physically can't do. Like if you don't have any Ionia cards and it says play cards from Ionia, you can just reroll it and try to get like, uh, for example, a Noxus one if you really like Noxus. Um, yeah, definitely prioritize missions and that will allow you to get bonus XP for your boosted route in the region rewards and it will also give you XP towards your weekly vault. And if you just keep working on that over the course of a couple weeks, maybe like a month, you'll just keep having explosions of resources added to your pool and you're able to keep building decks uh, off of those. And you can keep trying new things, uh, checking out what other players are doing and just using other resources in order to build the decks that you think you'll enjoy. And honestly, that's it. That's how to navigate the HUD. That's what every menu is doing. Uh, I gave some general tips on how to get XP, what you should do. Um, other than what I said, the challenges are actually pretty good. I haven't, oh, I haven't even finished these on my main account. So I highly recommend it. I know it can get boring. It can be a slog playing six or seven of these in a row. Every time you get on, just play like three of them and then hop into an AI match and then hop into a PVP match if it's unlocked and just like get the hang of the game and really figure out like how to maximize your own resources in the regions that you want. And with that, definitely give this video a like if you thought it was informative or entertaining. It really helps me out, it really helps to show that I did what I sought out to do, which is make a couple new accounts and try to figure out uh, how much stuff that we're given as new players and what we should be doing in order to get cards as fast as possible. If you're interested, there's also going to be a three beginner friendly deck updated video coming out very soon where I showcase three decks that are really easy to pick up and play and craft from a new player viewpoint. 
Also, if you want to see live gameplay, I stream over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash tempomao. I play Legends of Terra a crap ton, uh, and I always try to play a variety of game modes. I play normals, I play ranked, I play expeditions like I mentioned earlier, I play the AI stuff in order to provide as much context and education as physically possible so that everyone can get a jump start on other players. So definitely check me out over there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a good one and I'll see you next time. Laters.